Good morning YouTube, Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. So today we have something a well, little special. So it's as you see it says General Power View. So it's a meter that monitors my consumption and my generation. So I have it um, it's supposed to be before my incoming DB distribution board but in Nigeria wiring isn't always a um, hundred percent well wiring isn't what it's supposed to be so we have the meter before we have the meter before our we have the meeting meter below behind our inverter so everything coming out of the inverter is what we're seeing so it's not monitoring solar coming in it's just monitoring what's coming out so as you could see right now um, it says we're generating exactly what we're consuming because that's what we're measuring. If we had put two points of measurement, then we might have seen what's coming in. But what's coming in is rather um, high voltage. Um, let me show you on my, let me show you on my, so here we go. So as you see, this is what's coming in, 529 and 442. And where we have it coming in are two separate points. But you know what? We can try and monitor this as well. We'll try and see if we can monitor it. Um, You'd ask me to do a video, oh so sorry, before I get distracted and show my, hold on, so right now, my inverter, let me see, it's loading, still loading, okay, while this loads, let's go back to our power view, okay, it's, so it's showing 641 is what the consumption is, right, and power view is showing 630, so power view is more real time, while the other one is a little slow so it picks up what's been sent to the server and that data i think is sent every two or three minutes but power view is updating in real time as you can see the number is changing so back to so i'm pretty excited because when we compare what the power view is showing us to what the inverter is actually reporting the numbers are pretty similar so this is pretty good so today i'm going to explain to you what each of these represents so what that monitor data configuration overview and maintain so let's start with what we see real-time information right as you can see I have two strings PV1 PV2 it is about 8:50 a.m. in the morning and string 1 is generating 550 watts and uh, string voltage is 219.1 volts and then number 2 is 488 and string voltage is 152 as you see the charge power area that is what I am consuming, that's what I'm putting into the battery. So my consumption is 621. My generation between them all is 839, I'm consuming 621. So the balance, the difference is about that 390 that's being put into the batteries. My battery voltage is 2.1. So this battery voltage is incorrect because it doesn't have a BMS that's reporting back to the inverter what the battery voltage is and that's a fix that Lux Power is going to make for us to correct that to correct that um, we're putting 380 watts into the battery back here as you could see from the grid zero zero watts uh, zero volt AC zero hertz and consumption from the grid is zero I am not connected to the grid so you'll always have zero from that so on here, let me, oh sorry, bear with me, let me go further down. So here shows you what my consumption is uh, since, mid, since a little like midnight 01. So if you look here, midnight 00, I was consuming 245 watts, I was discharging the batteries, and that continues till somewhere around here. When solar starts, to, when it starts to produce solar, and then as you could see uh, the chart goes in the opposite direction as it goes up it means my solar production exceeds my consumption um, when the numbers uh, the blue is higher the blue indicates that I'm consuming from the battery and I'm not producing anything from solar and here is solar PV so on here it shows you solar PV battery in blue and grid, grid in red or purple whatever you want that color to be as you can see, all this, the blue is battery, the purple is grid, which we don't have, and then as you can see, that number just starts to change, and then the green is solar. 
So we'll scroll down here, and then here it shows you what your daily numbers are. Um, it shows you today, what we've done today. It shows you what we did. So this is from the first up until today, the eighth, and it represents it in what do you call these things again? Vertical, not graphs, but you know whatever that thing is. It has been so long since I left school, so I do not remember anymore. So back here, um, or oh, one thing I, I didn't show you, so we'll go back here. So, so far today, uh, our PV has produced 0.9 kilowatt hours. Our total production since we connected this is 239 point, they call it 240 kilowatt hours. And then our battery, we've discharged a total of 129.1 kilowatt hours. Since midnight, we've discharged 1.3 kilowatt hours. Feeding, we've fed zero to the grid because we cannot feed to the grid, right there. And then consumption, we've consumed 1.7 kilowatt hours, and our total consumption is 247.5. Now you notice that number is much, our consumption number is high, much higher than our solar yield, our generation, and the reason is because when we initially installed this inverter. We did not install the solar component. We're running separate charge controllers, and we're charging. We're charging using charge controllers instead of running it through the inverter. Now we're running it through the inverter, so that's the reason why you have a lower um, generation number than the consumption number. But those numbers are getting closer, so pretty soon you'll catch up. Um, battery discharge. Well, that's correct. Our uh, site information. Um, so I need to correct this. It's actually 3.8 kilowatts in PV and is a 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter. So you could see uh, PV coming from the panels, going to the inverter, going into the batteries, and coming into, the, coming into our loads. Right now I have the AC on, and the beautiful thing about this AC is they don't consume that much power. I have the two refrigerators and one freezer on, and I have two fans also running. And as per this, as you can see, our consumption is 529. That number continues to change. Okay, so we we'll go back to device monitor. Our device monitor says we are consuming 583. When I refresh, you see where I click refresh, it says loading. Loading, loading, loading. And it's loaded, it still says 583. So the new data has not been sent to the server yet. Let's compare that here. Yeah, you see that number has that, this number has dropped quite a bit. And uh, yep, you see we're pretty close now. So this is 506. So if you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Oh, sorry. Um data, the data area. You track a lot of information on here. This is a little longer than I planned. I apologize. I'm able to track uh PV voltage, as you see. Uh, for each of the strings, uh, PV watts, I believe that's what this number is, bear with me. Yeah, PV watts. This is a little slow. So you see, yeah, PV watts. And then your battery state of charge, which I'm not really very fond of because I don't like this battery state of charge. It's not very accurate. I stayed um, slightly, 75% is what I've averaged. I'm now a little above 75%. And this is over the last, uh, since midnight, and then um, battery voltage. And that, I, like I explained to you earlier, is also incorrect. They are fixing that. It says I've averaged 51.5. That's what my average battery voltage is. On the AC side, um, I'm, not going to I'm not going to get into this. It's pretty self-explanatory. It shows you what my consumption is. And these spikes that you see here, uh, from surges when the refrigerators or freezer kicks in. So that's what that is. History. Processing, please wait. It's a little slow. So it shows you all the events. It tracks your, volt your voltage of each of your PV string. And it tracks it by, I think, every minute or every two minutes. I don't know what that, that data is. If it's, yep, it tracks it every minute. Every so you see 857, 856, 856, 855. So I think it tracks it two or three times a minute. So it gives you monitors everything frequency, voltage from the grid, uh, voltage from the inverter, battery state of charge, everything as you can see. It tracks all that stuff for you. Local data is information on 
okay I guess it is a repeat of the same thing serial number time and then it shows you all this so this I'm not 100% sure on I'll read and when I do an update I'll let you know what it is history event is whenever I get a warning on our on alarm it records it so battery low voltage we couple and I got that on the 18th of April twice and then battery low voltage on the 17th of April communication failure on the 12th of April because he was looking for a BMS to communicate with the battery configuration this is um, the setting on also this particular plant is AWPS office Dr. Sola which is me it's PV power 3800 country it's Nigeria GMT plus one and we created this on April 9th then here's an overview same same data is show, overview tells you um, AWPS notice we have one notice which is a battery low battery uh, we've generated one kilowatt hour so far right now the system is um, putting 505 into the batteries it doesn't show you your discharge power or your load it shows you a total solar yield total battery discharge and then uh, if we don't have any feed we don't have any consumption from the what do you call it from the grid and then maintain this is where you go and you cha change your settings so you maintain bear with me yeah you go in here and you change your settings so this is where I change the battery settings the start voltage for the PV um, what else the battery low voltage cutoff um, if I'm going to feed to the grid if I allow that um, this is where that this is where that happens bear with me is a little slow the server is not very fast so it takes a little bit of time to communicate so meanwhile while it's doing that let's see what our consumption is we're 505 590 sorry 593 594 593 so I think is this AC that's doing that so back let me see if this remote setting so yeah so now we to access this you click read see that and then it brings up it brings me up which is the AWPS office my serial number and then it shows you the date then it shows you we have two two PV input modes we set our start voltage at 100 and I set this at 150 amperes which is really incorrect because it's saying it's let us set batteries um, we don't have a it's only to allow me to change this because we selected let us see if we change it to lithium then it allows us to change so we have an option of no battery let us see and lithium if we change it to lithium then it will allow us to select the type of lithium that we have so if it's a pylon tech a BYD, a what do you call it, a Dynas, you know, the different manufacturers. That's where, and pretty soon we'll have Wiko there. And then all these other settings, the video has gone a little longer than I planned. So, next video I do, I'll correct that data that I wasn't able to give you earlier, and then I'll explain this other, these other sections to you. So, once again, this is Dr. Sola coming to you from Lagos, Nigeria. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions, post them post them in the link below and if you're yet to subscribe please click the subscribe button once again thank you for watching this is dr sola